The Election Commission says the compilation of a new voters register for the 2020 general election will commence in April. Deputy Chairman in charge of operations Samuel Tete in an interview with TV3 said the exercise should take about two months to complete. This is not the first time that the Electoral Commission is undertaking registration or compilation of a register in an election year. In 2012, we compiled a new voters register. And then in 2016, we also did a limited voter registration exercise, all in the election year. Uh, looking at the criteria and all that, definitely there should be some pilot test and all that. All these things will be done. So per the calendar of the commission, we will start the registration in April. But prior to that, there will be recruitment, mm. there will be training, there will be deployment of materials and, uh, and testing of the equipment also. What the commission has prepared is this we are going to use what we call the cluster system what it means is that the registration is going to be done at every polling station when we say the cluster we are going to merge four polling stations and assign one biometric verification kit registration kit to it so the commission will use a period of 10 days for each polling station. So the first polling station will spend 10 days, then they move to the second polling station, it will spend 10 days, and then the third, and then the fourth. So with equipment of 8,000, and with um, a polling station of uh, 30, let's make it about 32,000, conveniently, within 40 days, the 8,000 equipment will cover all the 32,000 police stations and we will um, use about five or six days to do some sort of mopping up. So areas where they were unwieldy, areas where the commission thought that the people were not captured, there were some who were not captured, then we will use the mopping up period to do that. All right, so in the studio with me is a political analyst and lecturer, Jonathan Asantiocho. Good afternoon. So you've just uh, taken a listen to the clip we played a, sh a short while ago. What do you think should be the EC's position? Should they go ahead and compile a new register? You find that also if you look at the history of you know, our voting pattern in Ghana, after every two sets of election, there happens to be a new set of you know, um, voters register. Well, um, I will start by saying that um, if you look at the technicalities that he tried to explain, uh, more or less it is in order. But the problem has always been the fact that the timing is still inappropriate. Right. Uh, some of us have argued that, look, apart from the fact that uh, democracy is expensive, as others want us to believe, uh, the point is that we are still a highly indebted country and that we have to be prudent in our expenditure. Um, it does not mean that we should just throw our democracy you know, over to the dogs. The international community, they are, everybody is watching us, and so they will want to see that having come this far in our democracy, they will want to see how best we'll be able to conduct it. It appears that the 2020 elections is like a do or die affair, but mm. I think that that shouldn't be the case. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, we just want a foolproof kind of register right. in which the person who will lose will not be suspicious that uh, more or less somebody was somebody behind the scenes engineered everything, right. you know, so that uh, it inured to the benefit of one party or the other. And I think that uh, going forward, um, I will want to suspend judgment for now mm. and wait till Monday after the IPAC meeting. And when that meeting is done, then probably we'll know, you know, how best to communicate. I think that EC must come up tops in terms of the fact that they need to be very worried when they are communicating because communication at this point in time is very crucial. Right. Two, I will equally expect the political parties to go there with open mind, you see, to go there with open mind so that they do not in any way, you know, go there with that closed-mindedness or more or less thinking that somebody is biased. Or they need to go and look at it, look at the, the, the practicality the practicability of the whole thing, how feasible, you know, with this particular short 
point in time will be able to you know implement whatever they intend to do for us at right. the end of the day it is a free and fair election mm, that free and fair with. you mentioned issues of money funding yeah, yeah. but wouldn't we rather um invest into a system that will give us a credible election so that if we can pay to have mm -hmm. a voters register that's, that would that that would ensure that the outcome of the election is credible mm -hmm. is it not worth it it is worth it but as it stands now it is often said that if it's not broken why fix it the ec cannot convince anybody in, in its right sense that look whatever we have now the data right. the biometric you know devices that we have and all this on it's all it management processes mm. you know you want to tell us that it is it is so obsolete yeah but that that's what the ec says so that the system is obsolete and the machines are broken in now. the first place don't forget that not too long ago we opened the voters register we added a new list of people who have qualified to vote you got up and so what what data were you collecting what device were you adding those that particular data onto the EC, the EC hasn't um, said it was going to do away with the old data. The old, the, the, the data that we have now, mm. are we still very much being used? Are we still going to queue for us to take our fingerprinting, everything, uh, every, all of these things again? You see, let me just finally conclude on this. The point is that, irrespective of the innocence of heart, that the EC comes onto the table mm. with this particular kind of argument, the timing is wrong. And the opposition will be suspicious, irrespective of the innocence of heart and of mind. You see, and we don't have to create a situation in which whoever loses right. will have a good grounds to put this country into some kind of, you know... Uh, so, so at the end of the day, we all want a credible outcome. Yes. Right? Yes. And if that would require the compilation of a new voters register, shouldn't you rather be supporting the EC? Unfortunately. In any case, in the last, you know, in the last elections, mm -hmm. the EC said that they had to pray that, you know, all the systems work as they should. It is, it is internationally recognized that there is not a foolproof system. And even if we acquire new biometric device or whatever system that they want to put in place, they will still get to a point where there will, there will be the need for manual verification. And so I think that beyond all reasonable doubt, in as much as they may be advancing certain argument here and there as a way of justifying that particular, I mean, to be frank with you, I think that if they, want, if they are insistent on going ahead on something of that sort, I dare say that if we are in Ghana, it is probable that somebody wants to have something somewhere. You think so? Ah, it is possible. Anything is possible to in this what, country. To have what? Of course, there, there, is, there is a possibility of somebody benefiting one way or the other. Mm. To give such a huge or gargantuan contract, somebody to get somewhere a kickback from somebody would definitely the making benefit. of a new register. Yes, and I'm not ready to pinpoint as to who is going to benefit, but we have agents who are orchestrating everything. Like who? The Electoral Commission itself is mm. part of it. And then its agent, its assigns, all of them are equally part of everything. But I will equally give them the benefit of the doubt. But if it were to be somewhere to, to, uh, to, uh, 2018 there about that they had wanted, because you use the same register to create new regions, we use the same register to conduct the, the digital assembly elections. So right. why is it that, you know, when you had a larger number of people conducting elections for a larger number of people, you were able to do so mm. without acrimony? <coughs> Why is it that the, the, the presidential and the parliamentary has become so much acrimonious? Now, let's move away from the uh, matters of the EC and let's talk about political party funding. No. Do you think the state should fund political activities? Well, uh, You, for one, have already uh, mentioned that we shouldn't spend because we don't have. <laughs> yes, it's, Do a, it's, it's a dicey issue. Mm. Um, I think that when it comes to political party funding, it is not the matter of the government or the state making money available to any party that is created along the line. I think that uh, I remember in the early 90s when Farijan, Dr. Farijan was in charge, there was a time that they used to give some kind of resources, vehicle and right. other things, to some of these uh, uh, parties that, because then we didn't have you know, enough political parties on the ground. But today we have a number, a number of them that we just don't even know if they are on the register. Mm. And it's a problem. And so if we open that Pandora box into thinking that we want political funding to be given to all political parties that are created, we, we may not be able to solve that particular issue. Be that as it may, it does not also mean that minority interest must not be 
taken care of. Right. It is not always the case that majority interest is taken care of just because they find themselves in power. Mm. And then you have the NDC in opposition, they still have some kind of cake to share because they are right. in parliament. But what about the rest? Mm. They don't seem to have any kind of <coughs> opportunity to find themselves in government. Or so. If it were to be the fact that we are not too much polarized, as it were, right. so that, uh, for example, MPP is in power, they can easily poach people whom they think are good so that it does not become business as usual, mm. always giving positions to only party cronies. Right. And it has become a huge problem. If that were the case, I think we would not be thinking of that. But that aside, I think that funding political parties in itself will ensure that we, we progress in our democracy. But as to the manner, that one, we need some kind of regulation. Some have also um, um, argued that if the state was funding political activities, then it would be an attempt to reduce corruption drastically. Yeah. What do you think of that? Yes. Uh, that, that particular side of it. Because then you know how much you have, mm. you know, you have committed to political activities. Yeah. yeah. I know. And you can manage, you know, um, how th that fund is spent. That, that, that argument will obviously go against the party that finds itself in government. See the point? So when you win the elections, you are more or less compelled mm. to offset some of the debt you might have incurred, one. And two, those who helped you in getting there, you'll have to give them some kind of compensation. Right. And that compensation will have to take the form of contract. And then even there are people who might have financed you they may not be contractors, but you are compelled one way or the other. There is a big brother's hand somewhere mm. that is orchestrating you, the president, to give them some kind of position, you see, so that you see certain ministers in our current government, right. more or less, if probably not a particular godfather somewhere. Mm. They well, would what have do you think the ideal situation should be then? Come again. What do you think? What do you think the ideal situation should be then? Because obviously, you, you give me the impression that it's not the best idea. Um, you know, for the states to give political the, the parties. The ideal situation is that we have not thought through it thoroughly. Mm. That is currently the ideal situation. If we want to go ahead with that particular agenda, then as a nation we need to interrogate that particular issue thoroughly. All right. And that is the only way by which we'll be able to progress in our democracy. Thank you very much, Jonathan Asantiochi is a political analyst and a lecturer. Let's move on.